Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome to another uh, Capes and Beyond month. Yeah, this is still a superhero month and this is a movie this time, not another show. It's horrible, but I'll get to that. It's a uh, Marvel parody, no not a porn parody, uh, from 2011. It was par uh, pairing the, uh, the Asylum was pairing, uh, parroting, excuse me, the 2011 Marvel version of Thor, yes, uh, directed by Christopher Olin Ray, I think he's the brother of Fred Olin Ray, a mockbuster coinciding with the release of Marvel's Thor was produced by the Asylum for $200,000, yikes, this movie is freaking cheap, and it looks that way, it premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel Cable Network on May 7th, 2011, and was released on DVD on May 11th, 10th, the film was met with largely negative response from critics, you think? This is one of the worst superhero movies I've ever seen in my life. Loosely inspired by Norse mythology, the film follows the young warrior Thor, Cody Deal, in his battle against Loki, Richard Greco. And this is almighty Thor. Almighty oh God, this is freaking terrible. If you have never seen this movie, please don't. It's on Tubi, but don't. I warn you, it's one of the cheapest freaking Marvel parodies I've ever seen in my life. I've seen YouTube videos of people with that have less budget that did better than this. You have a guy that was literally a porn actor. I'm not going to say what he's been in because I don't want to get this, this video flagged. Um, it's not long. It's only 90 minutes. But the tw at, if you see this movie, you're going to appreciate the Thor sequel a lot more, Josh. Ragnarok and Love and Thunder. I enjoy the Thor movies that Marvel did. I love the first movie with uh, Chris Hemsworth and Natalie Portman. The second movie's flawed, but it's a lot better than this movie. Ragnarok was a breath of fresh air with the pretty colors and, you know, goofy tone. And it was funnier than than Love and Thunder. I can easily say that. Grandmaster sucked, but he's he's passable compared to the villain in this. And uh, Love and Thunder, I love Natalie Portman. She was the mighty Thor. This is freaking pathetic. This has no budget. It's cheap. It's badly acted. The effects are horrible. These, this CGI is worse than any CGI from any Asylum movie that came out after this. Like, Sharknado looks like Avatar compared to this shit. At least that movie had a bigger budget. This is the plot, in case you care. When the Gods of Deception Loki wipes out... Uh, uh, wipes off the city of... Or is wiped out. The city of Valhalla. You know, where Natalie Portman ended up at the end of the, first, the last movie. To steal the Hammer of Invincibility... Only the young hero Thor can recover the cities from evil. When Thor's father, Odin, played by freaking Kevin Nash, professional wrestler Kevin Nash. Yeah, he doesn't fit the part. Um, and older brother are killed in a, in a futile attempt to retrieve the hammer from Loki. A Valkyrie named Jar, John, John Saka, who was never in the films, by the way. The Valkyrie we have now, I thank God for Tessa Thompson compared to this, because... She actually can act. This woman cannot. Patricia Velasquez, the only thing she has is a great ass. That's it. If you've seen the Mummy movies, you'll know. Uh, attempts to train a naive and inexperienced warrior Thor to fight Loki. This leads to them on a short quest from their training camp to the Tree of inv Inventory to collect a sword and a shield and then to a small city where Loki attempts to hypnotize the refusing residents into serving as his minions by bringing out on a wipeout with a small army of demon for peace. When the hell was this in the Thor movie from 2011? I saw that movie and it didn't have any demon beasts or, or you know, like like a sword and a shield. No, Thor didn't need that. He, did, he has a hammer, not a sword and a shield. That's, that's Wonder Woman. When Thor is about to be defeated, he must forge his own fate to save the city and reclaim the hammer of invincibility from Loki and once and for all. Yeah, th this movie's horrendous, guys. It counts because it is a superhero movie, but it's a horrible superhero movie. One of the worst. You also got, yeah, R Richard Greco was Loki. Yeah, this, ain't, this guy ain't no Tom Hiddleston. He was a fashion model. He, he was in 21 Jump Street, the TV series. He's also done movies like Mobsters, It Looks Good Kill, and, and a show called Booker. Yeah, he's mostly a painter now. Good. Stick to painting, dude. You're not a great actor. Kevin Nash is Owen in? No. He, he's just, he's not even old enough for the part. Uh, and like I said, Patricia Velasquez is not a good actress. She just has a great ass. That's it. Uh, Hemdall was played by some guy named Chris Ivan Sevick. Uh, the Warriors 3, I don't even know who they, they, they're, if they're even in this movie. 
And like I said, the budget is so freaking low, you can feel it. This movie's from the 50s, I had a bigger budget than this, it looked better. Almighty Thor received large negative critics, I know, reviews, I know. Reviewing the film from the AV Club, Phil Dice Nugent gave Almighty Thor a rating of a D-, minus. that's exactly what it is. It would have gotten an F if I didn't have something to look at, like, you know, but seriously, it's horrible, guys. Taking issue with the film's low budget, the film is so underpopulated that most of the awful deaths Loki inflicts goes down off camera. Yeah, because they have to reduce the violence for the PG-13 rating, even though nobody saw this except me. I saw this years ago, and it was horrible. He points his stick or gives a command to his dogs. Yeah, there were no dogs in the first Thor movie. And then you hear somebody holler, Ah! Dice Nugent also criticized the acting of the leads and took issue with the producer's decision to shoot the L.A. scenes in abandoned parking lots. And again, it shows. Gods of Egypt had a bigger budget. That's horrible too, but it's a lot better than this. Uh, the comic high point is a fight between Thor and Loki with the guys spinning around and waving their weapons at each other while keeping one eye peeled for cops who might demand them to see their filming permit. The Blueprint website review of the film stated that this brain-numbing 80 minutes of constant noise, cheap effects, background music that never once stops, and ropey acting will test the patience of even the most hardened B-movie aficionado. That's me. And I couldn't stand this freaking movie, guys. It's horrible. It made me want to go back and watch the the the, Thor, the Marvel Thor movies and all the Avengers movies he was in as well. Even that animated Thor movie that came uh, that came out, uh, Tales of Asgard, is way better than this. It's not horrendous. Almighty Thor was just one giant headache of a film. The film was shown as a part of the German TV Schlesfatz in the third season. Yeah, the Germans suffer too because this movie is not worth your time. If you've seen the the, the freaking Marvel movies. Just be grateful for them because this is this is what happens when you're given when you give the asylum an idea to make a mockbuster that's so horrendous. I'd rather watch Sharknado again. At least those are fun. This is terrible. It's god awful. It's one of the worst plotted, you know, paced movies of that that they've ever done for the asylum. And uh, I saw it and I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking watching it. The writers, there's only one writer, Eric For Force. Bird. He did. He direct. He wrote and directed *Mirror Piranha*. As dumb as that movie is, I got more enjoyment out of that than this. At least I can laugh at it. This movie is just so horrendous, you can't laugh at it. He also wrote *Sex Pot*, which I'm again not going to mention that. *Monster*, which is an asylum ripoff of *Cloverfield*, even though it came out a, a year before. *Night of the Dead*, *Alien Abduction*, *Age of the Hobbits*, *Aragno*. Arachno Quake was alright. I didn't mind that. Uh, Snakes on a Train. Yeah. Do I have to say any more? No. Avoid this freaking movie like the plague. It's bad. This is a movie I wouldn't even watch during the pandemic because it's just horrible. And you've never heard of it? Well, good. Go back and watch the other four movies that Thor has done. You're going to get more enjoyment out of that with their big budgets, at least some laughs, and and good acting from Hensworth, uh, Natalie Portman, Jamie F Alexander... Uh, Tessa Thompson, yeah, they're they're freaking Oscar worthy compared to this. Avoid Almighty Thor from 2011. It looks like this. It's on 2B for free, and there's a reason for that because people don't want to pay to see this crap. It's horrible. Thanks for watching. Take care. You finally got a rant from me, even though I could I wasn't as angry. I just I forgot about it. The movie's so horrible, but I remember it being bad. Avoid it, please. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.